For those of you who are wondering where those extra Sundays of ours have gone, they are on, they're at Patreon. If you subscribe to QF on Patreon in the link given in the description to the Black Kluge level or higher, you're going to get access to not only the Sunday episodes that are missing from our regular free Sunday lineup, but you'll also get four extra episodes per month on Patreon that are unavailable anywhere else. Um, no, uh, I noticed that Howard always mentions, like, why does he always mention, like, race and something? Like, that's why my first phone call to him ever was, like, it's a subtle racism. Like, why did he mention that all her assistants were black and, like, hmm, and you didn't find anybody else? Hmm. But I think Cyrus is making the point that Howard made it into a black-white issue. Is that correct, Cyrus? Yeah, because even when I call over something that's not about race, he says, Cyrus, you're a black caller, right? Like, why can't I just be Cyrus to call it? And I don't. So do you sometimes you need, well, you don't need a therapist because you don't need answers. You're happy all the time. You walk around happy with Brad and those plays and sucking each other's dicks, and you couldn't be happier. Maybe dick sucking is what I need to do. (laughs) Let me see your dick. Try it? (laughs) No. Uh, No, I haven't. Well, maybe you might find happiness. (laughs) Well, maybe. Who knows? Did that happen to you, though? Do you fall in love on set? Because it is an aphrodisiac. You know, was you getting getting into music and guitar and all that stuff? Was that some kind of therapy because you didn't have your father? So the guy who asked you out the other day on the bicycle, he was cute and everything, right? Yeah. But we said no. We didn't go out with him. Tell that fucking, tell that fat, uh, tell that fat fucking cunt Robin to shut the fuck up. She can't stop mentioning that other fat cunt Bubba. They're both fat cunts that need to die in a fire. And when I think about your early life, I thought that you would be the guy who would be filled with anger and resentment because you lost your mother at 14. I always say this. How are you so kind and loving and not bitter about that experience? Did you graduate college or what? Just answer the question. Don't, don't, don't make fun well, of me. Did you, did you graduate college? I went to the Regent Street School, uh, post technical School of Architecture in London. Five years, and you didn't graduate. Uh, well, hang on. Let me go ahead. <laughs> All right, go ahead. <laughs> What's your rush? <laughs> hey, I'm not David Gilmore. You're not the yellow man. You're a fucking asshole who's trying to get under my skin. Oh no, but I just, dude, I've been following you from the beginning. I don't care. Stop following me. Yeah, you don't care. That's your problem. That's right. I don't care. I don't give a shit about you. Fuck, for five times. Fuck you off. Get some new material. Fuck you. Fuck That's off. Cool. Fuck off. Cancel your subscription right now. Baba Booey. Later. Baba Booey, your asshole. Oh, my goodness. My daughter, one of my daughters is fluent in Spanish. Yeah. And, uh, oh, my God, it's such a turn on. When she, when I say, I'll say, can you go up to somebody and speak? I, I, you know, like if I see a Hispanic person, I go, go, go up and talk to him in Spanish. She goes, oh, Dad, you know, I, I please, I said, it, 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 it's, it's so fantastic. So she goes up there, blah, 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 and they go, blah, 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 and I go, ah. Oh. Welcome to QF, a podcast about Howard Stern, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Phil Moore, a.k.a. Jim Fix. And with me for this one is Sam. Welcome, my dear. Congratulations on the move. You look like you're a lot happier and the stress is you can tell the stress is out of your head from having to move boxes and all that shit. Oh, God, it was such a nightmare. I got to the end of it and just, you know, the wonderful person that I am, I just started chucking whatever in box. I'm like, I don't care anymore. I was so organized when I started and then it's just, you know. So anything of anything that you opened up is did anything break? No, no broken anything, surprisingly. And yeah, I, was, I found I my podcasting stuff. So I was happy about that. I was like, please, well, God, let me well, find good. it quickly. Well, easily replaceable if necessary. Anyway, guys, we are happy to present to you. We've been wanting to do this one for a while. It's on the master list, and we I thought we'd just do it because we've got to get it done eventually. Uh, Robin and the Cleveland Book Signing. And uh, it's it's on one of those channels. I have the original video, but I was too lazy to draw it out. So this one is from one of those uh, Vietnamese slides. Some of these, some it's either Taiwanese, I don't know, but a Vietnamese channel where they have a bunch of their other shit and they throw on like five random Stern videos, and because they, they know they're going to get hits, so they get yes. hits for their other stuff. Yeah. I, I've seen that happen because a lot of times the channels I often find old clips on get taken down and then randomly i'll see them on these like foreign channels that have nothing to do with howard i'm like oh yes yeah 
And so they've learned something anyway. And uh, it, either way, guys, the, keep in mind this is in April or no, sorry, June of 2000, uh, 1995. Her book was out in April, uh, beginning of April, April 1st, I believe, of the same year. And she just had all she had to do this weekend was go to Cleveland to uh, the book appearance, like at whatever Barnes and Noble and sign. And, and this she is, this it, is how, you know, by the way, she can't. These people can't be real celebrities in the way that uh, an actor or an actress can, because, you know, when they do promotion or even a pop star, they're constantly on radio shows, interviews. I mean, you just you just know what that's like. She can't handle one book signing one. Mm hmm. Well, yeah. So you're saying, yeah, if she was used to it and if she had handlers that knew how to uh, and if she needed handlers, they weren't doing a good enough job. If she didn't have handlers. Um, she herself is not like clearly she's not fixed. She's not better. Every the psycho that's in her book is still very much in, in charge. And it's also interesting because she always lectures everybody else at this point mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. she has everything done for her at the show the Stern show. Yes. So when she is by herself for one book signing, uh -huh. <laughs> completely incompetent. <laughs> this, this might be one of my top 10 videos of all time on the Stern show. I've listened to this multiple times. It's so enjoyable. <laughs> okay, guys, here we go. Was Cleveland? Did you go? Yes. What do you mean? Did I go? So maybe you back out. <laughs> <laughs> it was a little tough getting there. What do you mean? It's a plane. Why? Because late. the. Were you uh, late? <laughs> Were you late? Well, I was late. I sat on the highway watching the plane go because there was a huge accident right in front of the airport. What time did you leave for the airport? The, uh, <laughs> at five o'clock when and the car got there. And when was, was your flight? Six fifteen. <laughs> uh, all right. Now. <laughs> okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. First, let's get the statistics for those of you not familiar with this bit of geography, because I did look it up. We do some homework sometimes, guys. Good. Cleveland, New York to Cleveland, flight time, just flight time is two hours. So it's not a huge, huge thing. I don't know. Um, I don't know if it's any shorter anymore because this was that many years ago. Plane technology changes. But either way, for a domestic flight, as far as I know, you have to be there and pre-COVID, obviously, an hour before at least. About you're, an hour before. You're even more wrong because of American flights. This is pre 9-11. So we're yeah. not talking about the same amount of time. Now, after 9-11, you have to be there. And I always go two hours before the flight because oh, you yeah. never know what security is like. And there's always shit going wrong. Like, oops, this baggage weighs more. OK, I'm going to have to check yeah, this baggage. It's, also, it's a Oh, I accidentally put a makeup thing that is one more ounce than I. It's such a fucking pain in the ass to fly. I can't even tell you. It's oh yeah, the ridiculous. lineup. they the lineup ahead of you. You don't know what other flights are are booked at the same time. And the security, there's only two lanes open for the bag check. And then there's that guy the like, TSA oh, do I forever. do I gotta take my do I have to take my my belt off? Even though there's a big sign there the size of Manhattan that says belt <laughs> off. <laughs> you know everything. And they oh, do you need to look at my laptop? But yes, God take forbid your fucking you get laptop frisked. Out. Yeah. <laughs> so, so anyway, now this is before then. So I would say, like, I remember going to Florida pretty much every year when I was young. And my parents back then would just put us on the plane. So you could walk to the gate. This mm -hmm. was before the security thing, before 9-11. My parents yeah. would walk, my sister and I. And we were, I think I was in fourth grade. We'd fly by ourselves. And the flight flight attendant would know that we were flying by ourselves and she would make sure we got on the plane, got off the plane. And my aunt and uncle would meet us right when we got off the gate. There you, oh, there you, okay. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's safe. It's safe. You're so, on a plane. What's going to happen? I mean, this is how different childhood was back then. Your parents <laughs> put you on a plane by yourself when you're nine. <laughs> so, you know, anyway, but we always got there at least even before nine 11, an hour and a half, maybe beforehand. Mm-hmm. So this is insane. <laughs> okay, so she's blaming. So it's the car's fault. Someone's someone else's fault for having the accident to delay her when she leaves. What, what whatever delay there is, if you leave at a certain time, that's on you. 
you told the car to get there when it got there. There's no way yeah. a car is going to say, oh, hey, be there by this time. And it shows right. up, what, 45 minutes late? I don't think so. And she didn't drive herself like she she didn't. She, it's not like she has that excuse like, oh, I'm going by myself, which isn't an excuse, but it would explain it a little more. Well, she's saying, oh, when the car got there. OK, Robin, you're a celebrity. There is no if it was me, maybe that's plausible. A regular schmo that says, oh, c can you be here at this time for a taxi and say the taxi's late? I can understand that possibly a celebrity. Oh. No way a car service is late for you. Also, if I think this is before she moved to Staten Island to live with Mr. X. So she's probably living in Manhattan. But still, I have to assume that from Manhattan to whatever airport she's taking. Um, I don't know what which but one again, it would be. It's I don't, hold rush on. hour. What, it's You're rush, not okay, it's rush, traffic. It's rush hour and it's New York. And it's not like the airports are downtown. It's not like there's a, you know, a, a fucking seaport airport. You know what I mean? At this point in time. So JFK is a nightmare. If anybody's what, ever flown out of JFK, you know. I haven't. But La, LaGuardia, I don't know. And is one is one domestic or are they both international? I think it's they're both international. I think maybe not back then. I think so. But at any rate, it, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a it's a pain in the ass. Either way, going to the airport, you have to factor so much time in access, egress, when you're going to leave. You have to presume you're going to have an accident, like you're going to need to go to the bathroom right before you leave, all that shit. And we are very prepared when we go flying. I'm not saying that was always the case. When I was younger, my parents would take care of everything. But when like, when I got to be an adult, I'm like, okay, don't do this ever again. Don't think you have enough time. Just don't presume you have enough time. Give yourself more time to you can always kill time, but you can't make up time if you need it. I have been my whole life drilled on my head to be early. Yep. Just to be on time. So yep. I am very cognizant of this. So this mm -hmm. bothers me. Yep. <laughs> Rush hour. That's right. Close. Of course, it's rush hour. That's, That's very close. That's when they told me to be downstairs. Oh, you don't tell anybody anything? No. You're going to LaGuardia or Kennedy? LaGuardia. Oh, that should have been enough time. Oh, okay. That really cutting it a little close. No, not cutting it close at all. I should have had a half hour at the airport. Yeah, it should have taken Robin 20 minutes to get there. Yeah. In rush hour? No. Yeah. Well, no, what, what day of the week was this? Friday. Oh, please. <laughs> oh, wait a <laughs> okay, now even worse. Okay, so it's Friday. Okay, so rush hour on a Friday in summer in New York City, there are so many people that are leaving the city to go to their Hamptons homes mm -hmm. or wherever their summer homes. They're, yeah. Everybody hates the summer in New York City. It's piss smelling, hot concrete garbage. Everybody leaves the city and especially, you know, people who can't afford private helicopters like Howard, for example, you're going to be driving out of the city. So if Robin is entrenched with these cars leaving the city and thinks mm -hmm. that she's going to have enough time for her flight, she's a fucking moron. But she yeah. should already know this. Well, she should know this. And of course, it's not like the car company is going to say, well, you know, miss, you should be there like uh, two hours early. It's not like they can tell her when they should be there or why they should be there. She needs a car. She just calls the car company. That's not their business. Their only business is being where you need them to be when you tell them. Right. And if like anybody's ever seen an episode of Sex in the City, like the one where they're driving to the Hamptons and you see like the traffic, for example, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. just giving this example because I don't know if anybody has experienced this personally, but if they have, they would know Manhattan's an island. So you're going to be going. There's only certain ways to get off of it. Yeah. So if you factor in the traffic at rush hour in the summer, oh my God. I mean, like you're an idiot. Yes. Uh, I thought this was Saturday. With Hamptons traffic. Oh, on Friday? You should have left at 3.30. <laughs> yeah, of course. No, we would have gotten there had it not been for that accident. We well, sat there stuck. Yeah, great. An but that accident would have been there anyway. It kept the place all tied up. You left at 3.30, you would have been there. Yeah, right. Not have been sitting in the airport for five days. So what? So what? So, so, well, okay. Well, that makes no sense. Uh, she's just to be an extreme, to be an idiot. But it, like I said... You get there early. You can just kill time. You can bring a book, do whatever. But if you you know you need to be there early, that's part of flying. And she fancies herself some kind of like sophisticate, uh, uh, sophisticant or like, you know, like, like, oh, I'm going to go. 
I, I'm going to go, you know, jet setting to Paris and this, that, and the other thing. International flights are bad enough, are ba- are really hor- horrendous. But you expect that. But any flight, just because the ins and outs of flying. Again, the traffic too. Like you, of course, you have to kind of presume there's going to be an accident. I mean, in rush hour, especially New York City drivers are one of the worst drivers I've ever seen in my, in my life. New Jersey, mm-hmm. New York City drivers are horrible, notoriously horrible. So you should obviously consider that. I don't know if this time, if this law happened, but it's enacted now in New York where if there's an accident or a cop pulling somebody over, you can't even be in the right hand lane. Like you have to, they can't, you can't be next to the cop in the shoulder. You have to drive, you have to merge into the lane more left. You have to, to leave a to, whole to lane them open. Open so that, yeah. Do, yeah. Because people were, because I think cops got ran over or something happened along those probably, lines. So probably, probably they were hitting the tail, the tail ends of the, the cars that were stuck out because they pulled over to the side, but not exactly like, you know, while they right. the shoulder, not, it I wasn't a remember. full parallel park. <laughs> but it's been, I, I, I remember it since I've been driving. So even then, so it has to be worse, makes yeah. it more of a, you know, clot. Yep. What happened? So, what time did you get to Cleveland? Oh, about nine thirty. At night. Yeah. Oh, that's not so bad. No, that was the only problem. And then uh, you went there and you signed your book, Quivers yes. Alive. Yes. Said hello to all the people of Cleveland. Very nice. Yeah. Did you explain to them that the the traffic jam held you up? <laughs> Traffic jam didn't hold me up for them. Right. But it rained a little bit on us. Oh, did it? Yeah, that was the first time I had a little rain. Yes. And I was a little late for the book signing. Why? It's not my uh, fault. Why? <laughs> He's waiting. He's waiting. Did you see how fast you said why? He knew this was going to happen. And he was waiting for her to say this. He's, yes. He can't wait. But also look at her, her like body language. She was very she was shifting her arms on the on the console. Oh, she tossed you know. back her hair. <laughs> yeah, of course. And so she knows she's busted. But the other thing is, but it wasn't my fault. <laughs> that was that fly. Just as soon as she can, she's got to put that disclaimer out. We didn't know about narcissism before. I mean, if you just threw this at someone, some learned psychologist, they would fucking pick this up immediately. Why is rain? Like the mention of rain, like I think she's just trying to add context to this to try to make anything be not her oh, fault. So she's rain. throwing she's she's throwing weather under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> Precipitation. <laughs> hey, how could you Look, not here's what, the deal. The barometric pressure kept me a little behind. <laughs> Yeah. They told me to be downstairs they, yeah. at n- I don't know where I am. I right. don't know where the book they told you. is. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like she's got a map of Cleveland and she's going to be negotiating the streets herself. She's not fucking Stevie Wonder without a handler. Come on. Well, she has the Stevie Wonder braids at this point, but in the, you know, whatever. <laughs> I don't know how long. Just so ahead, take they it. told you. They told me to be downstairs at one thirty. I was downstairs. What time is the book signing? Two o'clock. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was downstairs at one thirty, and then they said, "Oh, what are you going to do about checking out?" Mm. And I said, "I don't know. What should I do?" And they, what the fuck uh-huh. are you? T- hold on, I got to play this a little more. Let's play a little more because okay. I want to hear the full thing. They said, "Oh, you should check out now," which meant I had to go all the way back upstairs. So you didn't think about that before you left. I, I don't know. Usually what happens is I go to the book signing and they take me go. back well, to the hotel. If this were me. Yeah. Okay. So she had to check out of the hotel. She didn't pay for two nights. This is what I'm saying. And you will probably agree with me. How many people go to a hotel and don't know the checkout time? The fact that she went to the book signing completely unaware of when she has to check out, you know, the times that you're staying and you know, when you have to be out of the hotel, that is, that is, that is bare minimum of your knowledge of what you should do. And by the way, this isn't like a two week trip to Europe. This is a weekend in Cleveland. Right. And the other thing, it's not like she's, well, who knows how many bags she's got with her full of fucking Robin gear. But at the time, you, the first thing you do when you get the hotel, when you get to the concierge, the front desk, they tell you check out is at such and such as they're handing you the keys. 
They do that. It's it's almost like like the McDonald's Bible. There's a certain way in which they deliver this information to you so that it's present in your mind. If it's in the middle of everything or while while you're writing down your passport number and stuff like that, talking about international travel, they know that it's going to get lost because you're doing something. They wait until you're absolutely settled. You're you're calm because it's it's been processed. The card worked or your money. We accepted your money and you're going to get your room. And here it is. And here's the key card or key cards. And then. And by then, why, you know, oh, and the checkout is at blah, blah, blah. And if they don't tell you, most people are smart enough to know to ask or confirm. It says on the website, checkout is at noon. Is that correct? Yes. But if you want to extend it, da, 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 boom. More importantly, most likely when you book something like this, you, you know already. Mm -hmm. But then they just tell you on top of it. And especially somebody like Robin, I've stayed at hotels, plenty of them where they help you, the bellhop helps you to their room. They're Mm -hmm. going over all of this while they're helping you with their things. They're showing you a list of the amenities that come with the hotel. Mm -hmm. And here's the room service. And here's a list of things you can do while you're in town, possibly. I mean, it's it's inconceivable that she walks down to this book signing and is surprised by the checkout. I don't believe that for five seconds. But... I think it doesn't it lend more evidence to the the fact that her state of mind is such um, because there's nothing it's such a, a a mess because there's nothing about narcissism that I've read so far that suggests that they're scrambled like they're they're wit they're witless completely but she doesn't have organizational skills which has nothing to do with the narcissism I think it's just literally she was not she never learned skills of how to deal with anything so why should this be any different well uh, this goes back to anything you we've read in the book Robin mm-hmm. doesn't like to be responsible for little things like I have to be I have to do this for the army or the whatever air force she's, Excuse she's me. always a passenger in life Think about, for example, in the army when she goes, I didn't know, <clears throat> excuse me, I thought I was a great money manager. That's why I had this extra money. That was the the ultimate expression of, I don't know how this happened. Yet she went on the Sally Jesse Raphael show and said, I was forced to stay. Not only that, but she then at the same time said, you, I am not a victim. Look at everything I did with my life. I'm amazing. Mm-hmm. So yes. we have two complete trains of thought of I'm a passenger in life and I don't know what's going on. And then Mm -hmm. I'm also this strong woman who knows everything and you should know everything too. It it just doesn't make any sense. Again, she also was late for a lot of things when it had to do with the show, when it had to do with other projects other than showing up for the show, like the, um, that, what was that video awards or whatever, where she had to be on time for, What's his face? Uh, Ganji. He was going oh, to yeah. do oh, the no, work for her oh, for the Howard Stern um, Film Festival, the film festival. So he said, she said, be here at this time. And Robin just lackadaisically shows up whenever yeah. like it, like no concept of it. Yeah. And so also with her parents, she had no care in the world to clean up after herself. None of nope. this mattered to her. Nope. So if I mean, if someone if an adult isn't ever told to act like an adult and take control of their life, they never will. Like, why should you? And Howard's no different. He's worse in a lot of ways. Uh, But and I guess you have to you have to give Robin credit for at least traveling and seeing parts of the world that he'll never see. So um, she does. She should have when she when she (laughs) when she went, (laughs) she stayed on the plane. (laughs) That's another one we got to go through. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that'll be good. Yeah. I'd be on a cross. I know. I don't have you. That's why I'm not. Those uh, they that's are why e- I'm light. Those they are evil people. That's right. But they, they tell me what to do. Right. Usually the routine is after the book signing, they t- I have a couple of hours to hang out at the hotel. Right. So I don't have to check out beforehand. Who's in charge? Who's in charge? Like, who's, no, who's in charge of telling you these things? Yeah. Who's uh, they? Uh, who is Name they. they. Name they them. Paul at o- Harper Collins because he tells everybody else. He doesn't tell me oh so they said the book signing the book the book the book is responsible for you getting into a hotel i don't think so okay a book publisher sends a minion to deal with this book signing okay yes and i have to think 90s right now Mm -hmm. there is no way that she uh, first of all why would a book 
even I, I believe they probably told her when the checkout was or when they're leaving. I believe the hotel did. I believe Harper Collins probably told her what the itinerary was. I believe Everything. they probably left her with a schedule. Yes. But let's say they didn't tell her what time the hotel checkout was. Okay. How how is this the book publisher's responsibility to tell her that even so? Yeah. You, your only responsibility is to be at the stupid signing at such and such a time. And you know, because you've signed a contract to do promotion, it comes with the book deal because you sign contracts to write this book. It's not just, oh, can you write us a book and we'll give you a, a, a check and, you know, or a bag of money and uh, no muss, no fuss. It comes with doing the rounds. So she did all kinds of radio shows. You can see the videos on YouTube promotion. She did, I think, I think it might have been Sue Simmons who interviewed her. I can't remember. Or Denise Oliver, maybe. I can't remember. But there's a number of them around the time, and we might go through a couple of them because they're they're funny. Um, so she clearly has a priority in her mind of this is important. I need to be on time for this, but not this. And in her mind, I guarantee she thought, I'm going to get to that fucking book signing whenever I get there. And the time in my world, the time doesn't exist. Well, we'll hear from how she was behaving at the hotel, why I think that's true coming yep. up. But I also think... There's no way Harper Collins, if they were responsible for this trip and her coming to the signing, that they did not give her a play by play of what was going to happen while she oh, was yeah. doing something in promotion for this book for them. If yeah. they were responsible for this, it's a corporate publisher. There's no way mm -hmm. that they didn't say, here's what your schedule is. Yeah, here's your itinerary. They'd print it out and they'd give it to you. They wouldn't just expect fucking... you to have a piece of loose leaf and then just say, hey, write this down, oh, bitch. Would they not read it to you and, uh, like, I don't know, hide in the closet and make sure you're you're doing over the it? Over the phone, they'd tell you. They'd make sure to tell you multiple times. Oh, no, the schedule is that you're supposed to go right to the airport from the book signing. I had no idea. So they oh. is Paul. <laughs> so, so how the would you not know said. this? Yeah, she just goes, the schedule said, but I had no idea. Well, try reading. Yeah. Try finding out. Try taking the initiative and knowing this, because when you're traveling, you need to know these things. Are you uh, like imagine remember, you remember back in the day, if you didn't have your flight ticket, you were fucked. Oh, my God. Not only that, but I remember like school trips going to Quebec and, you know, we had an itinerary and we had to be certain. They let us have a lot of freedom or choir trips in New York City, Boston, yeah, uh, Virginia Beach. We had an itinerary. They'd leave us alone for a while and we could go exploring or do whatever, which is insane thinking yeah. about that now. I mean, yeah, sure, left us alone for hours in a strange city. But then we had to all meet at a certain point. And if we weren't there, we were in deep shit. You were always deep looking shit. at your watch. You were always looking at your watch, even if you had five hours to roam around old Quebec or wherever, or New York City. You'd go, you'd be going like every every 20 minutes, you'd be looking at your watch. Yes. Because you have that in your mind. As a normal human being, that's the way I feel. It's like between shifts. If I have to work a split shift, you're never quite relaxed, in my mind, between shifts because you're always going, eh, one hour left, two hours left, like I mean, that kind of thing. You know what I mean? Counting down. I can't so, imagine being this <laughs> scatterbrained or or flippant. I think it's not scattered. It's 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 not even I'm scatterbrained. She might be, but it's more arrogance. Like I don't need to be on it's, your it's, time it's, schedule. It's arrogance and it's like there's nothing else going on except for this. Uh -huh. So to me, it makes it even worse. It's not like you yeah. have a whole you don't have to like run a forum or have a TED talk. You're just going to sign books. Right. Or she wasn't doing three appear three in store appearances and this was one of several. You're not talking to a women's shelter about abuse. Right, Fuck exactly. <laughs> yeah. And he is supposed to tell you, but he tells everyone else. He tells everyone Who else. Who is everyone else? The the escort and the security people and the driver. They all knew. I didn't. So I came downstairs just to go to the book signing. And then I had to go all the way back upstairs, close my bag. So what time did you get to the book signing? Out. The people in the line say I got there at 2.16. I can't imagine that's possible. Oh. <laughs> They're unreliable witnesses. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. The she, she had a whole day. In other words, she flew there the night before and had a whole morning and, and afternoon. I fly there the night before to prepare. so they can tell me what I need right. to do. And can't you pick up the phone and ask they? I'm exhausted. 10 oh. o'clock I got there, Howard. And what about in the morning? What time did you wake 10? up? 10? <laughs> 10 o'clock. 10. Well, would you just catch like the end of Are You Afraid of the Dark on SNCC? Get out of here. 10. So she let's say so she got there what 10 at night after work, 10 at night, and then you get the whole night to fucking sleep. You have nothing to do until the afternoon. You literally have 14 hours to sleep. I get like about five or six hours of sleep a night based on right. like now because if we're moving and we have a lot to do. Right, right, right. And I have a kid and, you know, I drive her to school every day. And it's just like, I can't imagine having from, okay, say you check in at 10, you get in your room at 1030, 1045. That's a long time. <laughs> yes. You could literally l sleep in the bathtub and still be Oh, all my right. God. And wait, what time was this? This was at, she had to be down at 130 with her bags checked. So you have the whole night. I would be up at six. Mm -hmm. She gets to sleep from not only to that time, but that she gets to sleep. She she could wake up at 11. Well, 11. Is, Imagine okay. sleeping until 11. OK, I'll give I'll only say one thing on her, I guess, defense, if that's if there is such a thing that it, on the weekend, you're 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 probably got the same body clock. Your body clock is used to Monday to Friday, because at this point they were working five days a week. And because they're working mornings, you know, she's up at like four, three, at least like three, four, that kind of thing. So going to sleep way earlier, maybe seven, se eight something like that, right. getting or like maybe nine o'clock, you know, at the least and getting six hours of sleep, that kind of thing. Right. OK, but I got to see that if if the book signing was at 9 a.m. Yes, that's the only time it's a problem, in my opinion, because, yeah, if you're got an afternoon thing, well, then you're on your schedule because you would be awake normally for this. Or say you couldn't fall asleep or something like that. You have till about 1130 if you're like really high maintenance to get ready and get yeah. packed and get down there. What, right. are you, what are you packing an entire room? You're packing a weekend. Not only that, you can actually pay. Most hotels will offer like you want to stay an extra hour, an extra couple hours. There's a charge, but you can we can they can keep you longer until, you know, and, and just tell the staff work on that room last. And we'll have other rooms cleaned up for the next batch of people coming in. Nothing pisses me off more when it's a checkout time. That's a certain time and people knock on the door beforehand to try to yeah. like get in to clean early. I want to kill them. Like, oh, me too. Yeah, I when, hate that. <laughs> when I'm when, listen, when it's 1201 and checkout is 12 and I'm still there, knock by all knock yourself out. Pardon the expression. Right. But yeah, exactly. I don't wake up. Somebody's banging on my door. I'm exhausted. Howard, she needs somebody with her to call the guy she's got to ask. Right. She's too busy to call the guy. Right. I didn't say I was busy. I said I was tired. Ah. What time did you get up on uh, Saturday? You must have gotten up at some nine point. Nine o'clock. All right. So you were up at nine. Mm -hmm. And what did you do from nine until one at one thirty? I lay in the bed and moan. No, come on. What did you do from <laughs> nine? To, did you lay in bed? Did you relax in bed? I lay in bed and moan. Uh, yes. Come on. Don't. don't I bet you 10 bucks she had all kinds of room service, ate like a fucking pig. I can understand taking like pleasure in the amenities of a hotel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. OK. And I totally understand going somewhere and enjoying the taking full rest, of it. the R&R yeah. &R of it all. Listen, yeah. honey, I get it. This isn't that trip. So even if you got to do that, which is great. Mm -hmm. How can you just be so, like, unaware that you have somewhere to be? Or just, like, not, I, I would be so nervous, like, of, like, I have to be, I just can't put my mindset into this, like, yeah, her way hard, of acting. It's, it's, hard, it's way, hard to think. The same way we can't understand Howard's lifestyle because it doesn't make sense in real life. It doesn't make sense in normal day to day people's lives. Uh, we can't you can't you, you can't understand someone being this flippant about schedules, about something they agreed to do. That's a business thing. It's not like it's she uh, you know, she's just taking in a concert or something like that. You could be late for a movie, uh, whatever it is. That's fine. But you actually are contracted to be there for the stupid signing and people are waiting to fucking it's get their one, book signed. One thing 
one thing that you have right. to show up for that's on time. And then she says, I'm so tired. Okay. We just laid out how much time she had to rest and sleep. And now she just said she moaned in bed all morning. Okay. And just right. laid around fine. You're, you're entitled to lay around on your, you know, job slash just, you know, get taken or catered around and yeah. then book signing. Okay. I think about what it's like to have an infant and how tired, what, what tired actually is actually when you're is like exactly. up every two hours, every three hours. And then by the time they finally fall asleep, oh, it's time for work and you're yeah. getting them in the car seat and go to daycare. It's like, right. I, I well, have she... no empathy for this whatsoever. No, I don't. Nobody does. Don't be dramatic. I did. This I watched the book. Street Fighter. Yeah. All right. So you watched <laughs> movies from 9 to 1.30. <laughs> One movie. Right. There's nobody there to tell them to do it. Oh. <laughs> yeah. This is no excuse. I don't say it's an excuse. I say oh. that's what happened. All right. Fillmore, you're totally right. She laid in bed eating ice cream, watching Street Fighter. You're 100% right. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> At least she Raul ordered, Julia got Paul. She got, ordered got, uh, everything on the dessert menu. Yeah. Maybe said, fucking yeah. got into the mini bar and yeah. watched shitty movies. You're and right. You know that, and you know that fucking room's a sty. There's wrappers all over the floor. There's old chip bags opened up and bits of chips, Doritos all over the, the sheets and shit. It must have been she, a fucking pigsty. If she didn't make her mother clean up after her, or I mean, if she made her mother clean up after her, there's no way she's not leaving every fragment of food everywhere yeah, totally that's better now you're cured <laughs> yeah I, I can tell you about our, our intern now there were no pictures with that sometimes people say there are and there aren't <laughs> robin's hotel room probably looked like that the end the last scene with the twilight zone with burgess meredith where he wants the he wants the time to read all these books <laughs> 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 nuclear war it's just laid waste to the city that's what the hotel room probably looked like. So I maybe use that as the Photoshop for this one. <laughs> and I, she can't, she breaks the glasses. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to think of an image of what though, because I've seen trashed hotel rooms and New Year's in Hong Kong about, I don't know, um, six years ago, we stayed in the new territories, actually, because all the hotels are much newer and like, literally newer. And uh, downtown was just fucking through the roof expensive for New Year's. So we stayed there and there was a room next to us. It sounded like uh, they were filming a gangbang or something. There was so much noise. And when we went, in, we went left. I, I left to go like the next morning because we were staying a few days and I looked into the room and I, I as I looked into the room, the cleaning lady started laughing. Laughing because the look on my face was what the fuck happened here? <laughs> the couch was overturned. It was oh my like God. it was unbelievable. And um it was just people going nuts partying, I guess, for New Year's. And um and so for her, when you mentioned about her mother picking up after her, like if she was that bad at, at home, you gotta imagine she's uh. gotta be horrendous on the road. And her workspace, we know oh, that yes. she leaves. She's like, a, you know, an episode of Hoarders. Yes, every cap is open in the bathroom, like every, of everything that you could possibly open, probably on purpose to fuck someone's day up and make their cleaning day that much well, harder. Well, because she's not responsible. No. Well, oh, she really? said she sent pictures in the previous letter. Oh, I yeah, so I wouldn't even know. I'll have to go uh -oh. look it up then. Mm -hmm. And Tom says <laughs> no high school interns. Well, she could be in college by now. That was February. Right. Tom says no high school interns. Why? Because that's the rule. What, 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 who made the rule? So they were thinking of getting high school interns for this fucking show for slaves? Uh, yes. And that Holy kind of... Holy fuck. But again, it was in the 90s. It's a different time. Oh, yeah. You know, working things... I remember this was just like on the cusp of like when I could work as a mm -hmm. kid. Mm -hmm. I could work as... I started working when I was 14 Same. and it, w it was a janitorial thing. I cleaned a school, an elementary school that I went to mm -hmm. um, the year after I graduated from it. So that so I went I was a freshman in high school and that summer I cleaned the school with um, my sister and my friend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so we could do that at 
14 or my sister was the second year. So it was yeah, my but friend. You're, you're talking jobs though, like certain jobs and you'd be allowed to do. And where, what was the minimum wage at the, what was the minimum age wage? Oh my gosh. At that time? The minimum wage, I think it was seven fifty. No, no, no. What was the age to, you had to be to get minimum wage? Oh yeah. 14. We had to okay. be 14. <laughs> it still exists. My, because my first two jobs, one was I was do, delivering catalogs for uh, Canadian Tire. Uh, that was like a couple. Of, that was seasonal work in the uh, in the Christmas season, and that was bone break. Like in that snow with huge plastic covered thick Christmas catalogs. Man, you you built up muscle. And then the following year, I was I was thirteen. That was my first job. And then my second job. Um, working as a bag and groceries, I was 14, but I was under the minimum wage. I think it must have been yet to be 15. It was five bucks an hour minimum wage, but they were paying me 390. So they were underpaying me because I didn't meet the, because they, they could. Yeah, they could. For interns to be like, they should never be high school kids at these fucking places. Never. This? No, certainly no. not a creep show like this. Especially because look at the content of this. Would you ever yeah. send a high schooler to this? Yeah. Even in the 90s, whenever they had to be censored and stuff, there was still way too racy for, you know, any kind of high school or all like, don't get me wrong. In the, in when I was, I don't know, 13, 12, I'd heard all the fucking comedy albums that were filthier than the show could ever be. But that was, you know, that wasn't normal. <laughs> I had parents that didn't know what I was listening to. The best job I ever had, though, when I was young was babysitting like that yeah. paid the most. That oh, was yeah. like, yeah. You babysit for rich people. You get in with one family. They tell you about other families. It's like you're what, you're set. Yeah, whatever's in the fridge is yours. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Yeah, my my wife tells me all about that shit. Rule, Tom. Tom. What rule? And Tom is a moron. So why would we follow any of his? Like G. Gordon Liddy says, don't follow the rules. <laughs> if Tom comes there's in, there's no just, law that says you yeah. can't have a high school I, what do you mean? No high school interns. What? what? That's this girl is 18. She has the body of a college student. 34, 24, 34. She's very advanced. Yeah. This is not a girl who uh, is really in high school. And besides all that, look at her resume. Let's get her on merit. Should I call her and ask her to forward some pictures? Please. Because it'll help in the process. Yeah. Why don't you get El and, Rooney? And that's exactly why nobody should send their kid to work for there. And by the way, nice to see Robin based on the merit. Get her on the phone. Let me give her a personal interview. Okay. All right. She could be in college, and that would clear this right up. Right. Tom, uh, we have a rule here. Let's Long-standing look at the rule, picture. no high school interns. Oh, yeah? Well, why do you have that rule? He couldn't tell you why. I don't know. He would have no answer. He would sit here and go, because that's the way it is. And I go, well, yeah, that's the way. Because you're a creep. Because yeah. you're a fucking creep, and you're going to say things like, do you have your period? Let me, what bra size are you? Yeah. Let me see your thong. How many knobs have you slobbed? That kind of shit. Are you a virgin? Yeah. <laughs> Ever make it with women? <laughs> I wouldn't like, even know what to do. Like in high school, if somebody asked me that, I, I'd be completely PTSD. Like what? Well, you might, you would, you'd first be stupefied. You'd be going, D what, did I really hear that question? You wouldn't, I don't think you'd be able to process the information right away. I remember being that young and like working at Old Country Buffet. The dishwashers were older and like, yeah. I don't know, probably convicts. Like they couldn't get another job. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Felons. Yeah. Right. And they were totally inappropriate. I remember hating, yeah. hating going back there because they would always say shit. And I'd be like, oh, my God, I have no idea what to do. <laughs> yeah. What is it's the way it is. <laughs> Where is he? He's right here. He can tell us. I don't want to see his face this early in the morning. I really don't. Okay, I don't need to. Face. Why, why don't you want to see him? Yeah. It's cute if you're a woman, I guess. <laughs> to a guy, don't do a thing. <laughs> Doesn't do anything for you, huh? Yeah. I might appoint her you a book signing assistant. That might be <laughs> well, her interview. That would be helpful because I can't seem to get it mm. together. Her Nobody's job will be me. her job will be to make the call to talk to they. Ah. <laughs> Howard, you know what? I'm not even going to discuss this with you because you have no idea how I feel at this point. You have no idea what I've been through. And so I just tell you what happened. I'm not even going to get into it with you. Doesn't it sound like I just don't want to bother? <sighs> this is this is what I find so obnoxious is you're mixing feelings with mm -hmm. facts. Yes. The facts are you can't get it together to be on time for something. Mm -hmm. The feelings are, I don't like that you're calling me out for it, but I'm mm -hmm. going to make up that there was some sort of 
absurd amount of extreme drama or feelings Exhaustion. happening. That is not what happened. No. But now she doesn't want to get into it because of this. And when he says, oh, I could send you somebody or I can send some, what I'm telling you right now, if they even sent her with somebody from the mm -hmm. Howard Stern show, she would be aggravated, yes. aggravated and ignore the mm -hmm. fact that they were saying you have to be here because yeah. we know when people try to keep Robin in line, Guatemala, we have a whole series on the fucking <laughs> juicy sandal bullshit. She yeah. hates when people try to keep her on track. Well, look at the fucking at the, at the U.S. Open. I uh, didn't know yes. they weren't supposed to be like, or do we really need to pile on the excuses, the the examples rather of Robin abstaining all responsibility? You know, oh, I'm not sure. I didn't realize I was this was for, you know, this supposed to be like that. I didn't know I wasn't supposed to ask the staff to help me with my charity shit. She trashed an entire organization that has never had a racist claim ever and decided to say because she got kicked out of something that she wasn't even invited to and didn't have a ticket for it, that they said the N word. Well, I mean, I, if they may have had some claim like that back in the day, I have no idea. I can't say forever since forever, but it's you it, in the, that era in the, in the mid 2000s, late 2000s, if that were a reality, you know how fucking fast the, uh, the, PT, whatever it's called, PTA or not play, the play, yeah, Players Tennis Association, whatever, uh, they would be on Wimbledon or whatever was the U.S. Open in this case and get them fucking not me too, but you know what I mean? They get them shut down. They would be canceled in not no time. only not only that, but the press alone that oh, is yeah. surrounding because those events had constant photographers and press. You think that somebody's going to hear from a press like Us Weekly or uh, Inquirer or yeah. wherever, or the New York Times, who cares? There is somebody, if they heard that utterance, to, to just say nothing, and it's only heard probably third person by Robin. You're right. Yeah. No, that, the other thing is, the, the thing that's most disgusting about that is she threw that out there flippantly as yes. if, like, if it was a real, you don't joke about that. If someone... If someone, if you hear someone call you, that's a hate crime. You, you, you're perfectly within your rights to go and get that person reported and say like, "What the fuck is this? I didn't come here to be treated like that." But you threw it. She threw it out casually, like, "Oh, I think." And someone said they might have heard the N word being thrown around. You're just you're deciding to stain this organization with because you didn't you you had to get chastised for your fucking tickets and you weren't responsible enough as an adult to deal with this. But this is exactly what this is. So she can't handle something and be responsible. So now we have to make up an excuse. We have yeah. to So th that by the way what you were talking about she said that flippantly and then she tried to walk it back a little, but Howard already got the whiff of that and yes. he ran with it so hard, which she knew he would. She mm -hmm. knew he would. Yep. It was so despicable. Yeah. I don't care what you do. You know what, me? When I go away on these things, a lot of times, this is just a suggestion. A lot of times I pick up the phone and I, I call. I don't care what you do. And I no, go, I don't care what you do. Yes, you do, do because no, you don't, don't know what to do. I know exactly what I'm day. doing. I hear you blaming a lot of people. I, who blamed? You. I said somebody was supposed to tell me, but they didn't. What can I do? This is what happened. Sometimes I think about it. Like, I'll be laying in my room and I'll go, gee, I'd like to get out of here at whatever time it is that the book signing is over. And I go, hmm. You anticipate. Yeah, I'll go, well, maybe I should you know check what? out. And sometimes he doesn't. I don't know. It seems to be a lot. All right. There are people, and I know these people because I'm going to be married to one, <laughs> who don't <laughs> like to be told things after the fact. There's yep. personality flaws in people, and one of them happened to be time, mm -hmm. where you know what time you have to be somewhere, but you are not anticipating any of the things that I think I would or you would. And so you push it. Time management, you mean time, in, in, inability to manage time? Yes. Yeah. And he's not as bad as it, but Mia's dad is really bad at it. And yeah. it's just this, it's, it, you always, so as how I am, I have to make in my head time for that 
personality flaw where I, I factor that in. When I say you have to be somewhere at this time, I lie and literally say, no, you have to be here at this time. Full well knowing this person can't be on time. I'll give you a real quick personal example of what bothers me because I, why I'm different from a lot of my friends. I know I have a bunch of friends that they're the worst when it comes to leaving a place and going to another place because they drag out the fucking leaving Process. so long. And I'm out the door. I'm saying once we have agreed, so where are we going next? Oh, we're going to meet at such and such a place. I'm like, okay, let's go. I hate transition. So traveling me. to me is, is not an enjoyable thing. I don't get enjoyment to me. It's something you got to do. That's all. But to some of these people, it's like, it's like a, a hobby. Like, how long can we say goodbye to each other while we're while we're leaving to go to another place to see each other again? Why are you dragging the fuck thing out? Get your coats. Let's go. Let's move. I, Time. I, we're murdering our own. We're murdering ourselves one minute at a time. I literally am the same person. I hate hate. How can we? I want to. I want to rope them up like dogs on a leash and say, yeah. let's. No, Literally like, pull you them know, and I, and I what have we're doing. To. We just said what we're doing. How can you not figure this out? Like, right, I you don't need to do a million. Of, <laughs> what, why are you hugging somebody? We hit? we just <laughs> we're saw this person. Other. So what do we got? Uh, like uh, straggling, straggling friends outside of establishments, Ugh! the beach. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the Stragglers. Yeah. Fuck you. Let's go. Yeah. I'm. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Out of vape. You know what? All, all I can say is you better just leave me alone. Why? What would happen? Because I don't want to be bothered with you and your opinions of what should happen. If you're with bothered. With you and your 5,000 assistants. But you're, but you're late for everything. With you and your 5,000 assistants, so I get, don't want to so hear So then get 5,000 Okay. This is, now that's what I love. She's giving him shit because he has people to take care of stuff for him. She needs people to take care of stuff for her, but she doesn't have them. Or she does. I think she does have people um, helping her. I think she has some people helping her, but I think it's not to the level that he does. And I oh, think no that way. Robin considers herself on the similar level because she doesn't think Howard could achieve what he has achieved without Robin as sure. the token on the show, which mm -hmm. clearly she's been used as, you know, we can't be racist. We have Robin, you know? Right. Right. And that's clearly not true. And right. So she's probably a little bit resentful. Oh, yeah. I'd say so. I don't have time to do that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Whatever you have to do. I mean, you shouldn't be late for your book signing. Just screw you and let's no. go on with the show. You shouldn't be late. <laughs> and let's also, this is normal things that everyday people can do. You know, like this isn't asking for much. So both of them sound so pathetic. They do. I just <laughs> wish I was in that hotel room. Yeah. I mean, not in that hotel lobby. Yeah, you do wish when you she were. was informed. No, but do you understand she had something? to go back and pack. But do you understand something? <laughs> oh, she came there the night before, which was very good. Yeah. Very responsible. She, she missed the plane. I'm doing all I can. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> she missed the plane. That whole morning, you know what? Like, I'm leaving. And the whole, was, the whole morning oh, was the whole morning was free. The whole morning was free. She had the whole morning free. And all of a sudden, it's time to get in the car to go to the book signing and there was something else to do for her. Right. Yeah. So then Bye, Robin. The books, I mean, why would he even I mean, get to the book? She was checking out, right? Yeah. How about getting to the book signing she at was, noon? She... Okay. What I want to keep in mind, everybody to keep in mind, 90, 1995 in her book, she's got it written out that she's, she feels she's psychologically cleared to work for the show. And what is she, <laughs> what she's done, <laughs> what she's done right now. I, I guarantee if you want to look it up, guys, you can. Tips on how to man manage your um, anger issues. <laughs> she's been she's been told by her psychiatrist who, who retired and left Robin in the lurch. Of course, it was yeah. that's the way she wrote it. She left me up to dry. <laughs> it was someone else hung me up to dry. Or somebody into early retirement. Got it. <laughs> yeah, and so one of the tips they'll all tell you is take a break, go off and get go outside, do something. <laughs> count to a hundred, whatever, because I know you have a temper. I have a temper. Uh, and, and when I know like these days, I know that when I'm, if I'm, if I'm going to get into a high stress situation that I know I'm going to get upset, which thankfully isn't that often, I'll pop like a, a bit of Xanax, like a, like a quarter, like a half, a half a gram and, um, half a milligram. Sorry. 
Well, and, because uh, you and, and I are it'll, 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 yeah, but it, well, I'm not. Sometimes I can be really lazy, but when I know it's going to be a high stress situation, I take some of that, and it's like maybe once a month. And then she, but nowadays, and this is, you know, she's she's been told, you know, think of whatever else, uh, get away from the situation. She clearly knew she was going to get angry. That's why she removed herself from the studio. Well, I've created a child who is also so cognizant of time that it's annoying. So in the morning, we leave the house at 730, same time every day. And I have to, if she comes in my room a minute beforehand, I get furious. Like she doesn't know that I know we're leaving. Like I know we're leaving. I can't stand when somebody like, like tries to, yes. When it's like, I trust me, there's no way I invented the clock. I taught you this. (laughs) I am aware of how we have to get to school. And not only will you be on time, you're going to be 15 minutes early, no matter what. So even if I'm Five minutes late, which I never am. But okay. say for some reason, you know, Henry runs out of the house or something. I know what I'm doing. And and so it bothers me when people do that or like rush me when I I'm totally aware of what I'm doing. Okay. How does, how does it my apply temper, to the, okay. so the temper part? Yeah. She see how she's functioning where she just had to walk away. Yes. That was probably better than her. Yeah having that flip out that she did like, goodbye, Jason. (laughs) Right. Yeah. So what I'm trying to say is I don't think that it's necessarily a bad thing that she walked away. Like I think a lot of times when I blow my stack, it's better that I would have walked away from that situation and not blow my stack. She has blown her stack and she will continue to do yeah continue to do this but the walking away thing might give her a little bit of relief even though it's immature and stupid and it's over nothing yes i understand a little bit why she did it oh i understand 100 percent why she did it she just didn't literally she knew she was going to blow her stack on the air so she rather than rather than have that on video which she knew would be forever she's removing that from the possibility meanwhile but it still created this great video because these guys are all left fumbering they know exactly why she's left they know she's pissed off and they're dancing around it they have grillo and john go in and check on her right and then it's 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 that's why i I love this video because it's so uncomfortable because it's when we walk away, when we know we feel like I don't want to lose it and walk yeah. away, there's no radio show behind us to talk right, exactly. about it. So this is amazing. <laughs> it's, not, it's not like Big Brother where they have that room where they can talk about <laughs> the other people it's on film, a little confessional. Yeah. So great. <laughs> she left. Not only that, I mean, yeah. In, not in Big the, Brother, the real, real world, MTV real world, they used to have that thing, that little booth that they go talk to. Yeah, like the, the interview diary. Room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was talk, thinking about it earlier. It's like you're supposed to be at the airport for domestic flights one hour before takeoff. She was leaving her apartment one hour before takeoff. Yeah, okay, but okay, so fine. But that so wasn't that, the book signing. So even if she way. ended up there late at nine o'clock, That's bad planning. But but even if she, so that doesn't the point matter. Was she was in Cleveland with nothing to do except yeah that book signing. That was her sole job that morning. Right. And all of a sudden, it's time to get in the limo, and it's not like she has to go find the place. Yeah, what's that all about? Yeah. I don't know. What's going on in that organization? I mean, you. Uh, you no, 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 no. So see how Howard said what's going on in that organization. It's one person's organization. Right. Robin. But, he, but he's mocking it. He, he is mocking it by calling it an organization because it's Dan Clore as her, her agent or, you know, manager at the time and her. Right, and, and the Harper to, Collins people. Right, and Judith Regan, and they're basically like trying to make Robin. And and we all know, we both know, he's pissed about the fact that she had it in her to write a book. He's and he's the same way he would be looking at Stuttering John's apartment, going. Uh, Stuttering John made this uh, interview, uh, did this interview not long ago, and he said that when Howard visited him in Manhattan when he was with Susanna. And um, and he he says, I know he didn't say anything, but I I caught him looking around as if to say, how did you get all this shit? 
you know, like in a bad way. He Howard's the same with Robin. Like he doesn't want to the same with the, the, the dinner party. How did Bowie get a house like this? Why does Robin have a book? Uh, Why is and, Artie getting so, a second house? Exactly. All that shit. So he doesn't want people enjoying their life. And in this case, it's not about that. Like he, They have a legitimate um, argument here, but they're all right. They're all absolutely on point here. They're not really ridiculing her. I mean, there's a little light mockery, but nothing that she should have to leave like this. Right. Even if you are so upset about missing your flight and having to get another one, yeah. This isn't like how air works now, air travel works now, which is a complete colossal disaster. You can get yeah. on another one right away. You're yep. fine. You got there at 10. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. To do all day in Cleveland, one thing you do is find out what you had to do after the book signing. And there ain't that much. No, but, but, but not even that so much. You would say, well, let's leave for the book signing at, you know, what time? You know? Right. Where is it? How far? Yeah, it's gonna take some time. You might. I hate traffic. to. I hate to say this, but maybe get there a few minutes early. <laughs> <laughs> Sign a few books early. Well, get, yeah. get situated and relax. Cup of coffee, you know. Sure. There you go. And it, and it's not even like Robin is the main draw. Howard no. is. Yeah. So this is even more insulting to the fans, and in a way, I hate sticking up for Howard, but it reflects badly on him. It it does, but but well, it doesn't. It doesn't because you know that the the will callers oh, would be well, loved to be. Oh well, this is great. <laughs> this is fantastic. There, they're all people that were part of the the signing, having to wait in line. They would probably be. I can't remember if they get any calls from people like that. They do get some callers in, but I don't recall if there were uh, people in the lineup. But I'm just saying, as an organization, yeah, you know, you're. It reflects like your people can't be on time. Your people are this colossally stupid and can't mm -hmm. figure out how to be places where when they're supposed to be, they miss their flights They're You know, it. he would get mad when John would order drinks and room yeah. service or room he would get upset. Bar, yeah. He would get upset when people acted up because they're a part of the Howard Stern show. So Robin's number two. So I'm assuming he's not really appreciative that she's acting like, you know, Marie Antoinette here. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, and with the the other thing is, and I I, I seem to, I, I do understand that part of it. Jack, you got Jackie who does g weekly gigs, weekend gigs, rather, right. and he's a comedian. He actually and offers something, and a drunk, yes. But he offers he and he sells swag. He knows he has to. He he knows in his mind he has to bring this stuff. It's a routine. He knows how to do this, even if you don't have a routine. It's nothing to keep to a schedule. It really all it is is time management. And if she cannot claim responsibility for her own office being a mess and no one, you know, no one told me I had to get rid of this. No one told me this. Imagine what that person's like in everyday life with other things like, well, that's why it's, it's you know, it, uh, Mr. X. I don't know what the fuck he was. She must have, like I said, gave a Hall of Fame blowjob to put up with that mess. I don't I don't picture that i can't no I'm i don't <laughs> no you but, couldn't shut her up yeah. long enough God. so it's like a condescending blowjob it's just so <laughs> you'd have teeth marks on it you know what imagine it's like ah you're giving me side eye during yeah. this <laughs> yeah exactly chill chill out a little bit <laughs> don't have to be so frenzied yeah i wonder what happened there yeah what's happening all right um, hey, Robin's pretty well cured. <laughs> yeah. She went, she had to leave the room because we were d discussing her. She left the show because we were discussing that she couldn't be on time in Cleveland. You mean she, you think she got mad? Yeah. Well, well, yeah, she couldn't handle it. Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah, she's very cured. I hope Ganji's oh, chasing her. Yeah. I hope he's got that camera. Gary belongs with a helmet on a short bus. Yes, no, she she's does. not man. She just got up to take a giant deuce. What are you kidding? Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, I mean, well, the, I guess I'm I'm presuming Gary wasn't listening. He was doing other things, and that's why he's a little, uh, you know, a little bit little boof. Um, and that makes perfect sense. But he's also uh, he's going to tell you he's incensed because if this was him, they'd be goofing on him no 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 end. They'd be just nonstop goofing on him. Again, this is also like these people want to elevate their careers. 
a clearly Robin at this point to some sort of level where it's not just about the Howard Stern. So she's kind of thinking in the back of her head, I want to be more than this oh, show. Yeah. I think I can be. I think I can do Sally's job. Sally, Jesse, Raphael. I think I can be an author. I think I can be an activist. But she can't be on time, can't take responsibility. And this is the perfect example of why none of this worked out for her. Guys, I went through my archives and I thought that it would be good to add this because um, Sam just reminded me of something that I was looking for and finally clipped. It's from 1991. It's June, almost literally. It's five. It's it's June 28th. So it literally is uh, four years earlier. And it's he's upset because there's a TV Guide article. If anybody remembers TV Guide, I don't even know if it still exists anymore with the, the way do. set TV. Does it? Does it? Is it a, a, a subscribable? Is it online now? Is it just like no print? Um, it's not in print on grocery stores like where you used to see it. Because I remember my parents having a TV Guide up I until that. I was probably like. 11 or 12. Yeah. I loved it back in the day. It had a crossword. It had interviews. Mm -hmm. It had little articles. And also the synopsis, the synopses were perfect. Yeah. It was, li it was literally one sentence. And that's a, that's when you tell students, this is the art of brevity. How do you explain a plot of a movie in one or two sentences and a sitcom in literally one short sentence? This, I want to play this one because it ties into what Sam said. So bear with us, guys. This one we got right. I got a call from someone, Les. I said that you were in TV Guide or something. Oh, really? Yeah, that you had an article in TV Guide. I know I did an interview. Nobody told me the article was coming out. Yeah. Someone told me they read it. Hmm. I was sad to read about it, but sad. I was sad to hear about what you said. But What did I say? Yeah, forget it. What did I say? It's no big deal. It's no big deal. Uh. Was it the same thing I said in the movie? No. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what happened to you. You used to be so. We used to be so close. Yet, what did I say? I don't know. Nah, forget it. Forget. It. I don't want to bring it up. I, it's, it was a misquote. Okay, I'm gonna let it play no. a little bit more. But I think I think you guys are not understanding exactly why I put this one. Took this one a out. Li a little interesting too, because you can parallel this to Robin. Remember, in the mid aughts, she had that thing. Where what bothers you about Howard? I think it was the game. We're not. We're and just she, not friends. We're just not friends. We're just not close. So it's mm -hmm. the reverse. Yeah, and that was for literally. That was almost fourteen years later. Yeah. And he's saying that now. Right. But he's saying that because he's pissed off. Right, and he doesn't know how to express it other than, how am I going to, how am I going to make this seem. Like I'm a victim of something and mm -hmm. tear tear on emotional yeah. issues. Make it make it emotional. Yep. And I think that's maybe I think Robin does want to be close to Howard. And I think she noticed the difference after the fact. But in this case, I think Howard is just strictly saying this because he wants to control her and yes. he's and this was not something he could control. Nope. It too, was bad. It's too uh, already misquote. <laughs> <laughs> already mis I didn't even say what it was, and you said it's a misquote. What are you? Talking you sound like about? Jackie Martlett. No, no, no. Because wait a I second, don't you say don't... bad things about well, you. No, no, no. It wasn't a bad thing about me. It's just it was. If, please, please. I'm I'm too hurt. I no, I can't I, uh, I can't. Uh... Either you bring in the proof. <laughs> no proof. No proof. No, 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 no. Or you be quiet. All right, I'll be quiet. What did I say? Nothing. Nothing. Oh, you. Nothing. You said nothing. No. So I said I wanted to work with Jalen. Yeah, that no. was it. Oh, stop. That was it. That's exactly <laughs> it. You know what you said. That was a joke. It seemed like any not not recording to this article. Oh. This is that you're looking for another job. Oh, stop. This also ties into why it was such a big deal for John to leave for Jay Leno. And oh, yes. this also implanted the seed for him to hate Jay Leno for, you know, overly overly hate jay leno because this seed was planted back yep. then because he knows that every one of his staff if they had had the opportunity that john did would have taken it and 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 in this his case did immediately right. and this and, is the root this is this conversation in mm -hmm. robin planting that seed is the root of a lot of the evil he spouted regarding yep. jay
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then also, she, she, and it's not even just this, guys. In 91, 95, she goes on and appears in the infamous Linda yeah. Ronstadt confrontation. She does the voiceover at the beginning of the show. They yep. allow her to do that. You know that Jay knew that would fucking piss uh, Howard off. And it's, I'm sure it did. I have to go back and listen to the day after her appearance because I have, I have it, but I, I want to know if they addressed it because I have, I cut it ages ago and I don't remember if he, he lists, he mentioned that point. Cause I know I it would it hurt was, him. I think it was more based on what happened with the Linda yeah. Ronstadt thing is I can remember. I think clearly. so too. I don't, I, I really don't think that was a big issue, but I, I do she, think she, she said, that, I'd love to be your co-host. Yes, she did. And I really think that this the, the part where she can't get the Cleveland book signing right. And it also just shows how and how John failed with Leno. Mm-hmm. These people can only work in a certain environment because they're so trained a certain way. And yeah. Robin is Robin is like Howard. They are inherently lazy mm-hmm. and and they don't really they want to achieve more in their ego and in their brain. They want to be more in their mm-hmm. head. That's right. But they don't know how they don't want to put the work in to do that. Well, they they don't know and they don't want to put the work in. So it's like a double whammy. They're lazy fucks. And the guys, we're not going to go into a bashing, stuttering John thing. There's already enough shitty podcasts out there doing it. Uh, um, and uh, and guy, like, like we said, it's not necessary. But in the context of this, you've got uh, a whole staff of people that like Jackie walking off the show. Not mm-hmm. understand understanding completely his value to the show and maybe mm-hmm. overestimating, but I don't think so. I think he was very important to the show, but under overestimating his value outside the show. Not understanding that, that in that perfect storm that was the show and that or that bucket of fucking vipers, it, it, he he is a snake outside. He's a mouse. Well, he also doesn't understand how to negotiate correctly. Yeah, he did. He did. Yeah. Your strengths that you could play to in a certain time period, mm-hmm. you you have to be very astute and um, cutting at the right points, which yeah. Jackie missed. Yes. And he sh- like he, yeah, he, I don't know. I don't know that he ever would have based on the way he explained it. They were so tight with him and it was to Howard ultimately that was deciding who's getting what, let's be honest. Cause if Howard wants you to get that money, he wants you to be happy and he, he, he'll get that money to you. And he, as he did, he said, it came out of Howard's production company, the difference, what they wouldn't put together for Jackie, Howard paid extra. So I'm like, so already well, you're getting on Howard's bad side because he's out of pocket. He just didn't know. I would have played the whole thing completely different. I mean, we we should do an episode where we go into the whole negotiation with Jackie and I will tell yeah. you exactly how I would have handled it if I were representing Jackie and tell him what to do. I don't know if I could control Jackie, but I guarantee you I would have kept him on the show and he would have got a lot more money and mm-hmm. it would have been great. Yeah. Yeah. So you're ready to move? You you would leave Howard for TV? That was, you know, you I started work. to say maybe I should call nah. her back and tell her that was a joke. She nah. couldn't have possibly taken that seriously. I realize where it's at. Oh, Every- and by the way, guys, this is in the process of him having that E interview show on the West Coast, which Solo. is why I think it, um, him doing things like that without Robin mm-hmm. is also a catalyst for why this is happening. Yes, 100%. Man is an island. Howard, Howard. And said you and Fred are eloping. How? <laughs> no, I mean, it's just, you know, listen, everyone, everybody, look, I realize I can't, uh, I can't say to Fred or Jackie or you, Robin. And now, Howard, I can't even I, believe you would believe such a thing. Now, that To think hurts. that you would leave me to go make $85 million with Jay Leno is just frightening. <laughs> that, would I take $85 million and not be able yeah. to get up with you every morning? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh listen. look listen in a way i guess it frees me as well i know what you're saying you're saying howard go ahead <laughs> don't get so attached to me howard i've always said not to get attached to me no. that's right <laughs> this is fascinating really is in the, in the in the realm of the way we've discussed these two narcissists going at each other and their relationship with each other and how they're so similar in so sim- in so many ways but different in in other ways but the dance that they do, the dance, the, the little narcissistic push-pull relationship. It's a very 
And we always said they know each other the best. Yes. And they know exactly what buttons to press. And they know when they're being pressed. And so this even speaks more to the Cleveland book signing when he's saying these little things that shouldn't really mean that much to somebody and she has to walk away. Mm -hmm. This is because he knows this is something that's going to aggravate her to walk away because he wants to talk badly about her when she's gone. It's, it's purposeful. It's not to us, maybe at the time when we were hearing it, like, I can't believe she left. Right. When I say organic, when I say like, I agree when you're in a situation where you're going to blow and you should leave and it's probably for the best. Fine. But the fact that he pushed her into that, Mm -hmm. I think is purposeful. He knew that she was going to blow that that would make her uncomfortable. And now this dance right here Mm -hmm. is I no, you're upset about things that I'm doing, but we never talked about it. So That's you're right. doing things that are upsetting to me and did, we never what, talked about it. What did and Bob so, say? Meta communication. Very true. And so we're having this meta communication that's now coming to a head and Howard is laying it on a little bit thicker than Robin, but Robin is getting her jabs in too. Like, Oh, 85 million. Oh, I would never, you know, but she would in a heartbeat, but it wasn't offered because Robin truly is only meant for this job because anywhere else it would be worthless. She would be. Yeah. And the other thing is, so she's, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm going to tell you, but I'm going to tell you through TV guide, not personally. I'm yes. going to tell you, but I'm going to also t- I'm going to tell you after this art, you know, in the realm of this article or by excluding you from the TV show, I'm going to make sure that you understand this is where I value you. And it means so much more back then, because now this meta communication in these narcissistic celebrities exist so much more where mm-hmm. it's constant social media, you know, clout chasing and just drama and bullshit where it's like you are constantly meta communicating for competition Mm -hmm. and putting yourself out there in this space. But back then, if you did something like that, that's a lot more meaningful. Mm -hmm. Don't get attached. It's only fleeting. (laughs) You put in 11 years or whatever it is to someone. You can't even be serious. You believe that? Well, what can I do? I didn't think it was a misquote. I prayed it was, but yet when I heard it come out of your own lips. <laughs> How would I even say that? Is he going to be fun working with Jay Leno of Robin? Now, come not. on. Is he going to is he going to really let's, involve let's, let's look at history. Right, right. Go ahead, Robin. Haven't there been other approaches made? Well, you know, look. That's true. <laughs> but you were a different woman back then. Now you're very now you're very Hollywood. Now I'm tired. Now you're I'm tired. tired. Hold on. Yeah, there were approaches made, and yeah. she didn't get out of bed to say yes to them. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it really got to you getting up early in the morning. <laughs> what Robin is trying to say, that when you read the TV Guide article on Robin, oh. she's uh, saying that it's a joke. That was very much a joke. Mm. It's not. No, it's not. And, and She's like, and, when they said that I was... And this laziness of Robin exists and the way four years on where she's late to the Cleveland book signing, whatever is because she feels she was entitled to something better and she's not getting it. Well, do you think it's also a little, she's, she's a little angry that it's Cleveland and not New York. Of course. It's not anything. It's not some metropolitan, you know, Mecca. Right. Please. It's not LA. It's, It's Cleveland. Yeah. You know, fuck a baseball hall of fame after the book signing. I mean, come on. Right. I was interviewing blondes for HBO, and I came to you and I said, Robin, that was true. I don't even have a meeting with HBO, let alone a blonde. Oh, stop. <laughs> See, I could say that. was It wasn't even a misquote. It was some guy's supposition. He's saying that I was there meeting with blondes. But, Howard, uh, it was the same joke I had used on the air that morning. I know. Forget it, Robin. It's okay. I, you know what? You hurt me. You hurt me. I was hurt first yesterday. All, I walked around. All. I said, boy, look at Robin. Wait right there in print. TV Guide. It. If you want to get into it, okay. you know when you hurt me. <laughs> let's hear this. Watch what you say. Yeah, let's hear. See, to him, it's the optics mean more than anything. It's not even per. It's not. He takes it personally, but it's more about him looking like a cuck in print. Yes. 
Yes. And I think it's also, like I said, Robin can't, he really needs her, but she really needs him because if Robin were to do a job like TV, Mm -hmm. it's not, they are not going to need you the same way Howard needs you. So you're not Mm -hmm. as important. No, but I mean, look at look at the like the ultimate stuttering John getting that fucking job was uh, amazing and not because he's untalented, which he is, and not because, you know, uh, the schadenfreude, like, look where I ha- look how much money I'm getting now as opposed to what I was making with you assholes that he was over. He's going to be overpaid no matter where he works. If he works at McDonald's, he should be getting half minimum wage <sighs> for the effort true. he puts in. But the idea that Howard's conceiving that she could be successful elsewhere is the other thing that's bothering him that yes. she could accept a thing like that and maybe fail, but still take the job. And that's a disloyalty thing. That's a betrayal, but it's also not wanting her to actually succeed any more than he wants any of them to be successful. Gary's book, Jackie's Chachki, shitting on them. Artie's, you know, whatever this, Nick that, DiPaolo and the other thing. Show. Yeah. Yes. Everything. So it's, it's a multi-layered um, anger at the perspective endeavor and also the the notion that you could think I, you could do something other than this show. How dare you? Yes. And it also for Jay Leno to not to not offer this to Robin. Right. Mm-hmm. And to then offer that to John was smart on his part <laughs> because he's paying less. There's no like constant contract Robin would have been such a bigger pain in the ass where John is a more eager you know measly or salary in comparison so in in actual reality hiring John over Robin was way smarter on Jay's part because then he could get the dig and he could ding you know there's going to be some salary things but robin would have made him pay a shit ton more sign a longer contract and would have been a bigger pain in the ass than john i guarantee it well i the thing is the only the only hole in the theory is that jay didn't hire john the execs upper the the people above jay hired stuttering john and basically bought him for the show and yeah. and then so it wasn't really that it wasn't a conscious thing where we're going to do this to dig at Howard. It was merely it was literally, hey, Jay, we got this guy. We think he'll be good. Can you incorporate him in the show? He's like and Jay's the kind of person like, yeah, we'll make anything work. It's fine. It's, I don't care. And he's a very go along with the flow type of person. He's always said, I never said no because it was easier to like just go along and um, uh, please, so you can't tell me once you heard this offer with John that he didn't think to himself, this is what when he heard what John was making, I guarantee you he was like, fine, this is great. Yeah. I mean, he, he's a little he's well, not so, well, as well, he's not as the, like a shit. He's not as big as a jealous person as, say, a letterman. But he does think. A little bit about this. I don't know about that because he, the way the way the Mike Walker book explained it, Jay was pissed off because they they hi, they hired John and initially he's like, okay, fine, and then he found out well, John doesn't actually do any of the writing. So what he's like, why didn't anybody figure out that they could write all the bits for this guy before you hired him? And I, I believe that actually because Jay writes his own fucking bits and he has writers, he has monologue writers. They all those fucking shows do so. Uh, yeah. I, I don't think it's as calculating on his part. It was NBC's part thinking it was stupid. Them thinking John was going to work on the Jay Leno show doing similar things. Um, no, I agree. I, I'll agree with that. I think that they screwed up, but I do think that Jay probably took a little bit of enjoyment. Oh, deep down inside. Yes, absolutely. And yeah, when he found out and, uh, and Jay and he, the other thing is of course, stuttering John has trashed just about, Everybody he's worked with or worked for mm-hmm. or had dealings with, but he still will not shit on Jay Leno. And there's reason is because is he has no reason to. Yeah. Yeah. And he may be the last bridge that he hasn't burned. Pardon the expression. I hope you get better, Jay. We heard about the uh, fire, uh, oh, the no. accident. Yeah. Um, and apparently Letterman reached out to him, according to one of the blinds. After he found out about it, he reached out to to see how Jay was doing. That's so, for sure. I would it is, and I wouldn't be surprised to, to see if the Netflix thing still continues with Letterman that Leno becomes a guest on one of his things. Oh God, and you know that would burn Howard up so much because you were just saying how badly this is yeah. what he wants. 
Oh yeah, and not only that, it would be big news in terms of a certain a certain segment of the community who's old enough to remember. Uh, but it would actually, I would be fascinated to watch that that one you, episode. You can kill me now if anybody gives Tower to show. By the way, <laughs> it's not going to happen. That fucking that HBO Letterman, that HBO Springsteen thing. That's such a fucking hail mary. And some of us are theorized that Sirius paid HBO to air it, not the other way around. Because oh. they, they are trying to get some value out of a valueless asset they have, which is Howard. And if they can sort of use that and parlay him into some venture or whatever, it's why the this is it's you know because they they yeah. don't want to have to keep paying Howard TV whatever they can get if they can get HBO or Netflix to subsidize the video portion of the show, they can get that off their books. That's a great theory. That's that's the way I see it, because there's no way HBO, who, yes, is a cheap company and he should it should be beneath Howard to work for HBO or have his thing on HBO when he's trashed them for years for, being for cheap. years. Yes. Decades, <laughs> decades, not even years. And to be on that script is like no different than the AGT thing. How did you not realize that that's a scrub show and the, the optics of not being on the main show? America's Got Talent or sorry. Um, what do you call it? Um, American Idol. American Idol. It would, you're going on the lesser show. How would in your mind wouldn't you con contemplate that this makes me look like I'm a desperate shit? Yes, you're like not going on MTV. You're going on VH1. Yes, that's exactly it. Right. Fuck. <laughs> or in our, our case, you're not going on mu much music. You're going on Music Plus. <laughs> 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 my favorite we had we had that was our version of mtv it opened up like i, I it was like uh, it's called much music and they, they had a lot of great interviews some of them are still on youtube and uh they had purple rain show like the movie show on both but on the english one it like they cut out all the sex scenes which there isn't much and then the nudity again which there isn't much and the profanity but then on the french one they showed the the nudity and all that stuff but they dubbed all the voices so in the movie he says he says you know that prince voice he goes um for he wouldn't pass the initiation uh, you know, for starters, you got to purify yourself in the waters of Lake Minnetonka. And in the French version, they have some lumberjack Quebecois guy goes, <laughs> Tu dois purifier ton côté les de Lake Minnetonka. <laughs> 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 I fucking laughed. Like, I love totally, the dubbing. <laughs> the dubbing was awful. Anyway, we'll play a little more of this. Good this. Uh, 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 probably pull out some reference from nine years ago. You're, you're right. Ahead. Yeah, okay, when did I hurt you? <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear it. Remember when we had that birthday party for you? Oh, and we boy. scammed you? Yes, that's right. And made you think that we weren't giving you a birthday party? Right, right, right. You believe that so quickly. Okay, yeah, that's, so how could he that's the same. That's the same. How is it? I'm sorry. How, how old are, are these people? <laughs> yeah, this, uh, this, this sounds childish beyond childish. Unbelievable. That's the same as going into no, TV Guide. How could he just fall for okay. that? Let's drop the subject. Let's let, let's drop. What did I say in TV God? No, I don't know the exact words. You don't want to know. <laughs> you really, are you going to believe me or your lying eyes? <laughs> this is so. This is such a great example of how petty and ridiculous the two of them are. Yeah. You did pretty much. Uh, you were surprised by a birthday? Oh, drop it, Rob. We will let's talk about. <laughs> You know what? I'm never going to read the article. Someone just read it to me. Some very mean-spirited person who likes to drive a wedge between us. Who was that? That's who else? Who I was. Jackie. Jackie. No, no. Oh, oh Neil. Fault. Do me a favor. Next time, just just go to the bathroom on oh. me instead. If you, if you, if you. Howard. Uh, Robin, please. please, please. I can't, Drop I can't it. Never talk it again. Talk about so it again. Much. Please. How could you even question? <laughs> Is that you your tactic with me? Laugh as soon as you heard it. No. I'm sorry, Rob. It's just oh. I just had to know how, know how others will perceive it. Uh, and isn't it obnoxious? He's doing that low, slow talkings to get his voice even deeper on purpose. I know how others will perceive it. Yep, absolutely. I'm telling you, man, it's the optics. They matter more than anything, more than actual friendship. It's the look. You have to be my best friend who will never leave me. I don't yep. care if you are. You yep. have to seem like it. You fucking bitch. It's got to be Wigman and Robin. Oh, Howard. It's okay, don't worry. Listen, it's TV Guide. What do I care? How many people read that? Everybody? So, <laughs> Just anybody who had a TV. 
<laughs> which was, you know, hundred million. It was like people. the internet of yeah, it's pretty- like Google of. <laughs> Yeah, the six hours I spent I on the know computer. A single person who didn't have TV Guide back then. Right, the six hours I spend a day on the internet now and on my phone or on the computer I spent on TV back then. Mm-hmm. Oh man, it might be for that reason I gave up. I stopped watching TV big time because I think I overdid it as a kid. I watched a lot of TV, but like, I mean, I was, I was. My parents made me only watch an hour when I was growing up mostly movies like on the weekends yeah, yeah but the tv guide i can't think of a household i went to that didn't have a tv guide in their living room everybody had it almost everybody had it especially with a with a, a larger household because everybody had different shit they wanted to watch and everybody needed to know even though because schedules change or whatever and there's movies coming up and this and that and mm-hmm. i loved it I, I thought it was great Espe- especially when i got a little bit older and Right before the internet, okay, yes. like really, like everybody had the internet, like before dial up, just like that year or two before, there were so many more channels. So, oh, yes, that it was, we had multiple TV guides, people had multiple TV guides in their house because, yeah, your copy, there was no copy. other way to know what was going on, and there were so yeah. many more things to keep track of. Yep, rebellion, <laughs> like in China, they read that. Oh, you think Jay Leno will read? <laughs> oh, I think so, yes. <laughs> oh, what can I say? I don't even know what I said. You know, I work real You're hard. delirious. I work so hard. I, I, uh, I'll point it up to your delirium. <laughs> Robin and I have a very sensitive relationship. <laughs> it's okay. when, um, <laughs> look at Jackie laughing. Oh, he's having a yeah. good time at our expense. Yes. Jackie just let me know. TV Guide has the biggest circulation of any magazine. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, Jackie. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. You can go to a fucking house without seeing one. It was like a Christmas wreath in December on the door. <laughs> Literally, it was like, you know, everybody had fake plants over their fireplace in a TV guide. Right, right. Like you had ovens, refrigerators, microwaves eventually, and then you had a TV guide. Bad wallpaper. <laughs> yeah. Wood paneling. No, that's true, but you don't have to remind him. Oh, oh, that he knows. <laughs> yeah, that, he finally knew something. <laughs> it's the most popular magazine in the world, Howard. <laughs> that's his Berber carpet and a fucking Barca lounger and a TV guy. <laughs> is it reading? You know, Howard, when I embarrass you in the paper, it's always small little okay, crazy paper. Yeah, big... yeah the, the armchair from one set and the sofa <laughs> from another. <laughs> <laughs> oh guys like a pink shirt and purple pants yeah and a free new <laughs> yeah it's a free pair of how many people but when robin embarrasses you it's in china for crying out loud the island ear or something uh, <laughs> everything in Everybody had those fucking awful fucking dusty plants over their kitchen cabinets <laughs> oh man hanging plants <laughs> oh, geez, oh, yeah yeah I didn't embarrass anyone. That was a joke. Yes. See? (laughs) It's always a joke. You're too Uh sensitive or it's Uh a joke. (laughs) It's a joke for us, you fucking narcissist. (laughs) Like the jokes in the uh, movie theater? Oh, shut up. I said that already. (laughs) Oh. It's easier to take when I say it. Yes. (laughs) She's on a roll over there. Oh, you. It's called an. Okay, I'll leave that alone. There's no more for that. Uh, there's only about a minute. I'm not going to bother with the rest of it. <laughs> okay, uh, we're going to go back to the uh, the uh, the action, guys. Back to present day. Sorry for the little time warp, but we are like Doctor Who and uh, H.G. Wells combined. We just go from time to time, and it works. No, the camera was on me. Why is the camera on you? Because I was calling this girl to... No, go interview her and ask her if she's cured. If I wanted to talk about it, I'd be in there. Are you going to go back in soon? When they're done. If I... Oh, my Lord. Like, this is... So she retreated to her little 
cave in here. And she she doesn't have the computer. So That's it's right. now the, the, the paper. The new, uh, newspaper and printing. The thing is printing off, printing off news stories. You can just hear that dot matrix thing like whirling away. It's unbelievable. <laughs> I might not no. Is anybody worried that Robin has not come back yet? I don't know what what pissed her off, but she was like not <laughs> she didn't like the idea that we were asking her why she was late for her appearance. I might never walk out. I simply decided I'd come out here and do some work, so I wouldn't be late for anything else. Now okay. that's being that's being a total fucking bitch. What a baby. And a I'm going to do some work while you're not looking at the camera. What a baby. Like that is, I know he knew that was going to make her upset, but just the mm-hmm. fact that she's not even looking is so. <laughs> it's annoying. It's obnoxious. I can't imagine. Like it's just, if this is, you, being... you think you're going to get a job anywhere else? Okay. Yeah. And you, by the way, that whole newspaper thing, like her with the paper, you know that she wasn't reading a single word. Never. Look at how she she even does the news. (laughs) She literally was looking at it like the way a kid looks at, I don't know, an abstract painting who's three years old. Like, what's this? And because it was all about the optics. I got to look like I'm busy. I'm like I'm doing some kind of work. And the other thing is you don't go in the middle of your work. You're supposed to be in the studio on camera. You don't suddenly go out to do work. You would have to do that during your break. So she's full of shit. Yeah, she's not looking for the matchstick in the Pollock. No. Bye. <laughs> I think more happy. I have to get that sound effect. I'm going to play that one day when we have to do Robin's oh news. My God. When we do that episode of her, the the best of Robin's Oz, I'm going to pull that up. Oh, my and God. That's just I, such I a throwback. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm just trying to promote her book, so I don't know exactly what her problem is. You don't think there's any chance she's taking a personal day? (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) Should I go look for her? Well, maybe she's composing herself. Okay. Maybe she couldn't, you know, maybe it was too much. I'm worried about her. Yeah. She'll be all right. She's professional. Like right now, (laughs) it's not professional, but she would be professional. It was about as professional as making four stories into three so you could fit them into five minutes because you're too stupid to <laughs> edit them to make him into five minutes. The four oh my stories. God, she's as professional as Lindsay Lohan on the set with Gene Fonda. <laughs> Get out of here. Yeah, totally. Professional. This is like what Dan Rather did. He walked out in the middle of a broadcast. That's true. It's really weird. <laughs> it's not Dan Rather in this case. It's rather huge. But either way, I digress. Let's continue. I think that – so Bowie's in. That's the that's the other interesting thing. Bowie had to come in because they were missing a head. They were missing someone in there to go off of. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's like – because if it was just him and Fred, can you imagine? The silence? <laughs> yes. The un- discomfort. Like when it's just Robin and Fred, it was bad. Anytime it's just two of any of them. And then the Emma Bunton interview, I mean, Artie was there, but that was still excruciating. Um, and we're going to cover that. Maybe me and you will cover that one if I can get the audio working. I'm sure it was fine. I think it was Skype is maybe acting up. But um, either way, uh, it's uh, it's uncomfortable when the dynamic changes in that room. Well, especially like there is no Artie at this time. Yeah. So, you know, like we said, if Artie's not there, like after the fact, too, the silence mm-hmm. was palpable. You need Fred is a nothing, nothing when it comes to conversation and adding in. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go to Robin. Scream at me. Why don't you both go? Oh, I don't know if I want to do this. John, you can do it. I, I know what to do. I, want, I, I just want to hear it. Oh, you want to hear her yell at me? Hey, there's always some drill. He wants it in interviewing job. <laughs> oh, my God. Hold on. I'm going to put that back. Oh, no, that's a little further. Hold on. Let me get that back. Oh, you want to hear her yell at me? Hey, there's always some drill. He wants it in interviewing job. I love Oh my god. Oh my god. Hello, Frisco. (laughs) Circle gets the square. Oh, so silly savages. 
<laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Fillmore. <laughs> <laughs> Smells like teen spirit. <laughs> I think. <laughs> What's up? Look at look at that office. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to figure out just real quick, guys. The Muhammad Ali painting or picture we've seen that it's in her book. A couple pictures up in here. I can't tell what they are, but it's loaded with all this kind of shit. That's a huge desk. That looks like more space than she had uh, at Sirius. In her little cubby hole. Yeah. Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> are you kidding me? I'm getting a little much needed rest. Oh! You're not really mad at him. Yes. So you're 19 now? Yeah. Robin, yeah. you're kidding, right? I'm not doing anything, John. I'm working. That's not what you were going to ask her. Well, I was going to ask you, how could you walk out when you... I mean, you could dish it out, but when, when it's on you, you walk out. No, John, that's not it. Oh. <laughs> I just very sure you never walked out of the show. I'm very tired. <gasps> I can't even look at you. I have to roll up paper. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. She does have that little uh, Alice and Steele uh, FM late night voice now going on. I'm very tired. I'm very tired. I... Yeah. Now here's Toto with Africa. <laughs> you can go fuck yourself. I have a lot of paper to roll up. <laughs> I have a lot of news stories to not go through before I read them. What are you well, fucking getting kindling for a fire? What you <laughs> that's doing? what it looks like. I didn't want to argue with somebody. That dot matrix was the worst. You'd end up using seven sheets of paper to get one <laughs> workable printout because you kept ripping the sides of it, oh not getting God. the stuff off. Oh my God, it was the oh, worst. The worst. The worst. I remember. I remember a lot of times having to trying to tear off the sides and then still ripping it and then ending up having to use what I got to go to the photocopier and make one that looked intact, A4 size. So bad. Obnoxious so bad. Spot. And jams, lo like log jams in the fucking always, printer. Always. Always. Yes. Because of the dots. Yeah. <laughs> Buddy, about how tired I am. Uh, all right, well, then we'll leave you alone, Robert. You know, it's easy when you're not in somebody's shoes to say what they should be doing. Oh. So you're upset. You want a hug? No, I don't want to hug. You no. sure? I would actually want to go home and go to sleep. Uh, if I was really doing what I wanted to do, I'd be sleeping. Well, you look kind of tired. You're right. I'm though. very tired. All right, Robin, I'll, I'll leave you alone. You know, you know, you know. Doug, Doug made me come in here and ask you. You know. Well, that's okay, John. <laughs> hey, Rob, shut the hell up. You're the little pussy. They want to come in there and ask yourself. Like it wasn't my question. Who was it? <laughs> Told me to ask it. So what's with the? Okay, like uh, uh, guys, honestly, if anybody behaves like that in your workplace, it's more than a little obnoxious. Being dismissive. What is, what's Ralph's purpose? <laughs> yeah, yeah, just the the office stylist. I don't know. I honestly, if you want to throw office the fluffer. scent off on your ass, I would throw it right back to whatever the fuck I just saw in the hallway. <laughs> yeah, basically. Robin, is she like left the show? Is she quit? Is she just stewing in the newsroom? I'd like to know where she's stewing. Was she getting a lot madder than she was letting on? I don't know. What happened to Robin? Did I she go home? I in there and talked to her. Yeah. I said, Robin, how could you, you know, how could you dish it out? But then when it goes to you, you can't take it. Yeah. And she just said, John, I'm tired and I'm very tired. And I wish some people could be in some people's shoes and realize, you know, how it is to be this tired. <laughs> so where is she? She's in the office. She, she looks, her, she looks very tired. And very she's upset. not, and she's not coming back on the air. She, she says she she's, quit the show. She seems very upset. She says she's working and she's pulling news. And she quit she, the show. I, is she in the news? I, news she's in the I don't see her looking tired. I no. see her looking annoyed and avoiding. And doing busy work. Like, not this even is, work. I mean, this tactic wouldn't even work. I mean, I, who hasn't pulled tactics where you're avoiding? This is so blatantly pathetic. This even is like someone arranging the swizzle sticks next to the coffee machine. I'm tired. Right. <laughs>
What? The newsroom right there. Why don't you hold open the door and have a conversation? Did she quit uh, the show? Is that it? I, I know. I think is she... our teaming up? I mean, is that it? Is it like Abbott and Costello breaking up? It's Martin and Lewis, man. <laughs> Maybe it's that time of month or something. No. no. She can handle that. <laughs> We're all tired. Yeah. I had to sit by my pool with my kids all day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what anguish. Oh, my God. We fucking have to put on a floaty piece of shit. Yeah, an above-ground pool, Howard. Oh, God. Hire a fucking intern high school. <laughs> Help you out. I, Ashley Phelps at the bottom of the pool. I had to take my boots off. I couldn't oh, rescue her. Christ. Yeah. Christ almighty. Yeah. Pool. Wait, I had to go it. by the pool. <laughs> yeah. Unbelievable. God. Jesus, you're in the salt mines, aren't you? Well, it was very uncomfortable. I didn't. She really? wasn't yelling at me. She was just like very uh, patronizing. I see. She's just like, well, John, I'm tired. The book signing was Saturday, not Sunday, right? Well, yeah. <laughs> maybe it was. <laughs> okay. I think we can leave it there for now. That's a good. That's a good chunk out of this saga. Fucking <laughs> Saturday, not Sunday, right? She's unmarried, no kids. <laughs> she has <laughs> a mansion. Millions of self portraits. <laughs> I took all the clocks out of the house because they were getting in the way of my portraits. She has people driving her to work. Fetching her the news stories. Supposedly, no, she's getting her own, but I don't believe that. If they had interns then, that would have been one of their jobs. The people from Harper Collins showed up when they showed up for the, for the airport. <laughs> no one told me. <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't bend and moon. <laughs> Anyway, guys, we hope you've enjoyed this episode. Um, it's going to be at least a, it's going to be a two parter. We'll we'll do the rest of it in one in one fell swoop. But uh, we hope you've enjoyed this. And uh, if you like the show, say it in the comments. Give the likes, share on different social platforms, social media platforms. Um, and if you love what you're watching on YouTube, check out our Patreon content. It's fantastic, and um, and recommend it to a friend. Even if just for they don't even have to be Stern fans or Stern X fans. They just for a fucking goof. They met. <laughs> But really might enjoy the banter. I don't know when we discuss. <laughs> and if you don't like it, I'll bring out my newspaper and not look at you. <laughs> right. We'll be really tired. Take care, guys. We love you. Cool. What's your email address? It's, uh, you got a pencil? Yeah. It's okay. It's a lang. Okay. Dot slash org at Ted sucks cock. Backslash Teddy is a fruit. Dot com. Dot com. Okay. All right. Thanks for your call, Jack. Thanks. Good luck with that email. <laughs>